Hello, Quincy. My name is Eileen Fontenot, and I'm one of the librarians at the Thomas Crane Public Library. And today I'm here with local poet Donna Stein. She'll be facilitating a community poetry reading, Fall for Poetry, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, November 6th. All are welcome to come to the main library and hear poetry read by your neighbors, and maybe try uh, your hand at reading some poetry yourself. Welcome, Donna. Well, thank you for having me, Eileen. <laughs> this is uh, an event that now has happened four or five years, mm -hmm. and very grateful to the public library for allowing us to use the Quincy, uh, the community room mm -hmm. on the first floor. Yeah. Um, and this is the poster that Paul Porter mm -hmm. made for the mm -hmm. event. So, mm -hmm. folks, yeah. uh, <laughs> look around if you see this. Mm -hmm. um, just tells you what Eileen just said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, we're looking forward to it. So, um, yeah. do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself um, and your background? Well, I started r writing or reciting, mm -hmm. presumably before I could read, mm -hmm. reciting poetry to my mother, which she thought was some miraculous <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose I was influenced by fairy tales mm -hmm. and poems that she read to me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I probably wasn't very original. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, she would write these down and send them to children's magazines and a couple of them I guess were printed in oh. a publication called like We Wisdom which mm -hmm. collected children's work and oh, published cute. it. Yeah. And um, then teachers encouraged me, those teachers that had uh, poetry as part of their literature program mm -hmm. in public school and I suppose that was a dangerous thing because <laughs> then I began to think uh, it was something pretty cool. All right. <laughs> and kept on, just kept on kept doing it. Kept on doing it. it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was on the uh, board of the literary high school magazine mm -hmm. and then on the college magazine mm -hmm. and so on. And then you that went kind on of from thing. there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so. I suppose the uh, real jump start for other than taking classes mm -hmm. of other people's poetry in college, mm -hmm. um, was uh, I was spending time doing that at home, mm -hmm. uh, in between taking care of the baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never quite, quite figured out exactly what my husband thought of my poetry. But <laughs> at one point, he said, well, I suppose you better find out what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, to myself that I knew what I was doing. <laughs> but I said, well, if that's what he thinks, okay. Yeah, I'll so show him. <laughs> I signed up for a poetry class at Harvard mm -hmm. and uh, okay. was accepted. That's great. And yeah. um, then went on to work with Kathleen Spivak in a, a Radcliffe Seminars program mm -hmm. and went met on. other people who did the same thing. And I thought, well, gee, this is mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and you so, found your people, really, so, eh? Yes, I did, yes. <laughs> that's yes. wonderful. So, uh, but that's sort of how I got, mm -hmm. got in, into, it. into doing this community event, was mm -hmm. when I moved to a new place, and I couldn't find any poets. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, wait a minute. Maybe if I organize and announce poetry reading, mm -hmm. people will come and read. Right, and then they did. And they did. <laughs> well, that's great. So, so what kind of things can people expect from your po the poetry reading you're going to be facilitating? Well, one of the things that I enjoy mm -hmm. as being a member of the audience is that there are all kinds of poems, humorous mm -hmm. poetry, rhymed poetry, poetries that are narrative, that tell stories and mm -hmm. so on. Um, People that have been inspired by Shakespeare mm -hmm. uh, will recite some of Shakespeare's poetry mm -hmm. uh, from one of his plays. So there's quite a range, right. and there's quite a range of people in terms of age, oh, retired yeah. people, uh, some high school students, mm -hmm. which I love to hear their yeah. work. And uh, even though it might still be on their phone, they'll read it from <laughs> their phone, which is fine by right, me. Yeah. Um, so I think it's quite a range, mm -hmm. and that people, I think, enjoy that mm -hmm. aspect of it. Right. So it doesn't have to be original work. It can be someone who just enjoys a poem and wants to share it with people. That can be, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a favorite poem, you could come and read your favorite poem. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a poem that you have written. OK. Um, so why should people read and listen to poetry? What does it bring to people? I think. Uh, uh, 
it's good for the soul. Mm -hmm. uh, I think any art, mm -hmm. painting, uh, dance, uh, going to theater, hearing theater, hearing music, mm -hmm. is uh, s essential. Okay. Um, I'm aware of studies that have shown that students who take part in the arts mm -hmm. usually do better mm -hmm. or improve even in their other school work in terms of elementary school, uh, middle school, and high school. Mm -hmm. um, good yeah. for the soul. Yeah. I think that's what I would do say. Do you have like small children, like smaller children? Like when you started out as a kid, do you have like parents bring their kids in or do you encourage that as well? Well, I haven't especially done a program for children. Mm -hmm. I think parents who read to their children mm -hmm. inevitably uh, read poetry. Dr. Seuss is totally poetry, mm -hmm. Sam I Am, right. and Green Eggs and Ham and all mm -hmm. that. So people sometimes aren't aware that they have already a background in poetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things I like to do when I was teaching at the university was to say, how many of you read poetry? How many of you listen to poetry? No hand goes up. I said, mm -hmm. how many of you listen to music? No. And everybody uh, says. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, yes. exactly. I said, well, good news for you. <laughs> Song you're lyrics of poetry. That's right, yeah. yeah. So you're like, you're one of us. <laughs> well, yeah. that sounds really great. Um, anything you want to add, or, you know, about what's going to be happening on the 6th? Uh, no, we haven't. I haven't gotten into music, mm -hmm. but I think it would be wonderful mm -hmm. if there were a musician who played the harp or some instrument would like to come and mm -hmm. provide music. Yeah. That would be great. That would be Or great. even maybe somebody would read to music. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't gone that far yeah. yet. Yeah. Maybe we'll that's see. something to think about in the future. Like uh, maybe. Expanding. Maybe yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds yeah. great. Well, thank you for joining us, and everyone is welcome to come to the library here in Quincy uh, to read some poetry, hear some poetry. And coming up now is um, Donna's going to give us a little preview. Hello, I'm Donna Stein, and I'm facilitating the poetry reading and listening event being held at the Thomas Crane Public Library Wednesday, November 6th. Right now, I'm going to read one or two of my poems, even though that evening I will not be reading my own work. You'll be listening to members of the community read poems they wrote or that they enjoy reciting. This is from the, my fifth poetry collection called Leaving Greece. I wrote some of the poems when I was living in Greece and this pretty much is a description of the sounds during the day. It's called Black Wings. Cicadas stop in the dark. The cats in heat have screamed all night long. At five, the roosters start. In the noonday sun, turkey's cart gobbles across shuttered rooms till sundown. Cicadas drive everyone crazy till dark. Late afternoons, we get up while dogs bark and swallows, twitters join the throng. We go out, though at dawn the roosters start. Those black wings, bats, next embark on their evening swoops, squeaking, are gone. Then cicadas stop. Lovers kiss in the park. At 5 a.m., the roosters start. So some of these poems use or take off on a myth or a mythical figure. Some of you remember Circe, who presumably turned Odysseus' uh, sailing companions into swine, pigs. Circe, this one hums, crawls from her cave near Vulyameni, shakes out her hair, dislodges anemones, smooths her dress hanging like a curtain of gold. La, 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 sings as she pushes her right foot into its silver sandal, decides to go to Glyfada for its evening, cool now, steps onto the number 15 bus, moving her hips just enough for those who stare, wonders if she tucked in her breasts, rubbed the fur down on her arms, 
reminds herself not to open her mouth or they will follow her on Metaxas Street, turn to the harbor. It's getting so a girl can't even have a quiet night in town. Everyone wants a siren, wants to drown in someone else's song. And that's the end of a poem called Circe from my fifth collection called Leaving Greece. I hope to see you Wednesday evening, November 6th, starting at 7 in the Thomas Crane Public Library Community Meeting Room. There's parking and the event is free.